Hey, this is Stacy Carroll from the Condo Chicago team of At Properties, and I'm coming to you from my home in Chicago. Today, I'd like to talk to you about navigating multiple offers as a buyer. The first thing I'd like to say about multiple offers is someone's always going to be disappointed. You see a hot property with a buyer, maybe you're at an open house and other clients are, are seeing it too with their agents and, and you can tell that, um, that the property is very well priced in great condition and it's a place you really want. So the first thing you need to do is kind of get together a game plan and the conversation that I have with my buyers is really about if somebody else bids a thousand dollars more than you are you going to be upset that you didn't get that property. So let's really come in with a strong offer even if they're going to come back to us and ask for a highest and best. Um, it's best to come in with a strong offer financially and also have it be a professionally prepared offer. And what I mean by that is a fully filled out offer form coming to the table with your pre-approval or if it's going to be a cash offer, your proof of funds and really minimizing the contingencies and the waiting times like five business days for attorney's approval and for inspection. You want to keep those terms short because if something does go wrong or you don't like the property, then they can go on to the next person and feel like they haven't wasted a whole lot of time waiting for your um, contingencies to, to be removed. The other thing you might want to consider, and I have done this with clients, is something called an escalation clause. Now, some sellers will not take them, but if you have a good relationship with the agent and they are willing to take an escalation clause, it's, it's definitely something to consider. And how it works is, let's say a property is um, listed at 300,000. Maybe we would go in at $2,000 above the highest offer that they receive, not to exceed 315,000. So 315 would be the maximum that you would be offering. If somebody else offered above that, you would not get the property. But if somebody only came up to 300,000 or 303,000, then you're only paying $2,000 more than that highest and best offer. So I'd like to feel that out with the listing agent to see if they will accept an escalation clause. And I do encourage my buyers to use one when they're in a multiple offer situation. The other thing to consider is a love letter, I guess is what we would say. Um, a letter that states how you feel this property meets your family's needs or your needs and um, how you fell in love with it when you first saw it and some feature about it. Um, I think it's worth just having a little bit of personality to the offer. Maybe you include a picture of um, you and your dog or something like that. And it does make things stand out to the seller. Um, I also tend to write up something professionally about myself and, um, and how I work and how I look forward to, you know, a seamless transaction, um, how I have the experts on hand from attorneys to inspectors to really make things go quickly with, um, you know, with the, my buyer and their offer. And I think that that can make a difference, especially when you're evaluating something that's almost apples to apples in terms of price. Another thing that I think is very important as representing the buyer is to talk to the listing agent about what the seller's motivations are. We know obviously that they want to try to get the best price that they can, but there may be other things that are just as important. Um, one of those things would be the closing date. If they are looking to sell and then purchase at the same time, having a specific closing date may be very important or perhaps they are relocating out of town and they're really not gonna have the ability to do any fixes, let's say, that would come up from the home inspection. So agreeing that you, know, you would ask for a credit instead of having the fixes done would be important. Um, another thing is keeping the contingencies tight. So mortgage contingencies, um, the home inspection and attorney review contingencies, keeping those tight so they can feel like if something falls through with the offer, they can easily or and quickly move forward with, with another offer. 
I hope these tips give you more confidence when you are out looking to, um, to not be afraid of a multiple offer situation. Um, it really is upsetting to me when, um, when buyers learn that there's a multiple offer situation and then they just don't want to compete. I think that there's a way to, to win and to not feel like you're overpaying in the situation. It's just potentially that the seller has underpriced or undervalued the property. That's really why there's such a demand for it. And I hate to see clients back away when that situation arises because using the terms that I kind of outlined previously, I think that you can win those offers. Thanks for watching my video on how a buyer can handle a multiple offer situation. I also encourage you to look at my other video on how I work with sellers to handle a multiple offer situation. And you can view my other property and um, neighborhood videos below. Please like and subscribe and you can see my neighborhood videos as well as my property videos and other advice videos on my YouTube channel. I'm also offering a buyer's guide that you can see in the notes below, and I encourage you to click and get that buyer's guide when you are coming to Chicago. If there's any questions that I can answer, I would certainly appreciate the opportunity. And um, thank you very much for joining me today.